Hey there, it's Daphne. I just wanted to do a special introduction for this episode. Elizabeth and I are doing a series of Black Sales commentary tracks. We're going to do every episode in all four seasons. A few of them will end up here in our podcast feed, but all of them will be in our Patreon feed. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash common room radio and subscribe even at the $1 level. And there is a lot of bonus content waiting there for you if you do. We did some special episodes for Fathoms Deep. Also, there's stuff, special episodes for our other podcasts. Uh, there is a bonus interview with Hannah New waiting for you there. And we'll be doing this whole series every month or maybe two a month for some months. We're going to have some fun guests to do the commentary tracks. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Okay, enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a Black Sales podcast from Common Room Radio. I'm Elizabeth Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive, and this is the first episode in our commentary track series. Which I'm so excited about. I don't know why it took us so long to do this. I don't know either. We, we've we like, I think we've watched all of two episodes together. I was going to say, yeah. And this is one of them because this was the episode that yes. we watched together when you first flew to Oklahoma when we started doing this whole show. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, this is our excuse basically to watch the whole show together. Yeah. I think this started because you were saying how you really want to rewatch and, you know. It's true. Me. Yeah. This will be the first time I've done a good rewatch since, you know, whatever, actually, ever. Because I've been in and out on the live tweets even. Right. Yeah. Wow. I'm excited about yeah. this. This will be lovely. So, yeah, this is going to be really fun. I, you know, being me, have been rewatching ever since the end of season four. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Something like a dozen times per episode, right? <laughs> uh, that's funny. We are actually count trying to count to count on this episode at dinner tonight, knowing yeah. that I was doing this. I have no idea. Have <laughs> it's no a idea. lot. <laughs> and I think for this one, it's probably the third or fourth time because there are a few that I've gone back to. But right. still, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. It's impossible to know. Also... I have been watching this episode quite a bit lately. Uh huh. Do tell why, Daphne. What are you working on? Because I am uh, working on a book, <gasps> um, which is going to be partly uh, me writing thoughts about episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be different than Fathoms Deep because it's very much informed by me going back to the beginnings uh -huh. since the end of season four. Uh, part of it's going to be interviews beyond the interviews that we did for Fathoms Deep. And part of it is going to be essays by amazing contributors. One of those contributors being Elizabeth. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, yes. I'm very excited to start writing about this. Uh, so yes, this will not be a thing like an actual physical book for probably a very Quite long time. time yeah these yeah. things take a long time and a lot of work yeah so these things take a long time i you know have multiple other actual jobs yeah um, but i'm really into it and i'm very excited and it's been um took me a long time to actually commit to it and now i am i'm committed so that's why i'm telling everyone mm -hmm. which is crazy i'm so excited <laughs> yep it's gonna be lovely uh, so, yes. Yeah, so part of what will be fun for me about doing these commentary tracks is that uh, we will probably always be a few steps behind whatever part of the show I just wrote about. For oh, myself. yeah, of course. So, yeah. So that's kind of going to be a little bit fun for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so many new ideas to bring to it. That's great. Yeah, it's it's been neat. I mean, I think I think I am now truly proof that this show just grows with you. Mm -hmm. Like you just they're still still keep watching it and I still manage to find new things and yeah. that's been the case in our live tweets and so so yes that's kind of neat uh-huh so just so just encouraging everyone to just keep watching yeah you'll see new stuff every time it's great that's <laughs> so cool yeah it's a just such a gorgeous piece of writing I there's nothing else like it there really is nothing else like yeah. it yeah yeah so yes, so we're very excited about this series. We're going to, uh, all of them will end up in our our Patreon feed. Uh, we will 
we will post some of them as podcasts as well, but mm-hmm. the majority of them will be just for our patrons. So that is you all, if you're hearing it the same week that we recorded it, because this mm-hmm. is going in the feed right now. Uh, we are going to have some guests. We will yes. keep you posted on that. So we God, are we've been so lucky and fortunate with this whole thing with all of the great contacts that we made. Yes, we have been so lucky with all of the people who have joined us in Fathoms Deep. And yeah. we're going to have a great time, hopefully with a bunch of them for this as well. But for now, you get the two of us and uh-huh. welcome everyone to our thing where the two of us wanted to drink and watch Black Sails together and talk about it. So we're doing that. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So everyone <laughs> queue up. This is episode one, the first season. Uh, Cue up to where the screen says 1715 West Indies. All right, so count us down. Aye, aye, Captain. Three, two, one, play. All right, here we go. All right, I'm still at 1715 West Indies, and now I'm at the rest Mm. of the text. Good, me too. (laughs) Somehow this text is a tiny bit funny to me now. Like after the whole show, it it seems very aggressive compared to where the show ended up going with the war against the world. That's true. Yeah, I suppose so. And it starts so beautifully. It does start so beautifully. It gives me the ships just right away. I'm so glad. I know. I'm so so happy for you. Um, So, yeah, I, in the the writing, I made a big deal of the cold opens, as I did in the podcast. My cold open theory is is in full swing about, about our cold opens always subverting our expectations. Right. And yeah, that's what I love about this one is that just we are in exactly the kind of pirate show you think you're going to be in because it's pirates. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love how it starts out and you think that you're getting exactly what you signed up for. And then slowly as you move through, it gets so much more layered and so much more complicated. Right. This and was the point when I first saw just... Black Sails where I was just like, yes, this is exactly what I thought a pirate show was going to be looking like. I don't yeah. like pirates. <laughs> so that, sure. That, yeah, that was my first response. <laughs> was like, but I don't like pirate shows. <laughs> and here's our beloved Luke Arnold. I know. So we've He's got... such a baby here. The long locks and God, he changes and shifts so much. The character does rather over the yeah. four seasons. Yeah. And do you remember how much I disliked him at first? <laughs> you disliked Silver so much at first, which I love. It's like, I hate this smarmy little greaseball guy. I know I'm supposed to like him, but I don't. Yep. 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 I think really I wasn't supposed to like him. We're supposed to kind of grow with him. Um. Yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to like him. I mean, I actually kind of, I like that kind of puckish character. So I... Puckish. That's very good. Yes. I I was in like, I enjoyed him. I don't know if I liked him, but I enjoyed him from the first minute because Mm -hmm. his like, his smart mouth was just, I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yes, exactly that thing that we're about to see where he's like trying to charm people like Mm -hmm. actually did work on me in the beginning. That's good. Because I was like, I like smart Alec guy who's right. actually obviously very smart. Very intelligent. That is true. It's clear from the very beginning that he's a cut above the rest when it comes to brains. And the action sequences in the show are so gorgeously done. Yeah. And there's our first introduction to the page. God, it starts so quickly. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we have this wonderful thing that we're going to have a parallel with Max, where mm-hmm. where, where Silver saw the page and understood what it was, and Max saw the mm-hmm. page and and understood what it was. Ah, oh, Max, so brilliant. That's right. We get Blackbeard in this episode. We do. We? we do have the Blackbeard scene ahead of us. <laughs> yes, I've been watching this episode a lot for the book, and I I'm have sure. had to watch the Black the black the quote unquote blackbeard scene over and over again quote unquote yeah <laughs> i was so surprised when they really brought the historical blackbeard in after that particular sequence um but it was lovely to see him yeah well you know how i feel about him i do you made it very clear <laughs> 
So yeah, this I, actor here playing this captain, I think, is really great too. He has so much vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he absolutely does. Which is so important because we're really supposed to be here with this crew yes. right now. Like it's it's so easy to forget when you've gone through the whole show and the pirates are our people. But yeah. when you're watching this, the pirates aren't our people yet. We're supposed That's to right. be afraid. They're the enemy. Right. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be terrified right now. Yeah. And they did it masterfully. They really did. Especially just, here in a moment where it just goes silent and you get the steps. Yeah. Right. Absolutely terrifying. This so part, scary. all the sounds mm-hmm. are terrifying. Yes. If this was the and show we were watching, yells, yeah. if this is the show we were actually watching, I would have not actually watched it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. I could have for a while, but probably not for a whole four seasons. No, for me, it was this the This is when we got our first pirate theater. Yep. This is pirate theater. I think, I don't remember when we first said it. This might have even been when we first it talked about it. might have been. Yeah. Because I, I feel like there's no way to talk about the scene without talking about the theatricality and just right. this, especially when we get Joshua later taking his teeth out, you know, like there's right. a literal costume yep. change, you know? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, this is gorgeous too. I forget it somebody is. somebody just recently in one of the live tweets talked about how Black Sails uses silence and semi silence so masterfully. Mm. And there we go. Hi, Joshua. There he is. <laughs> Horrifying. I know it's so good. And Billy, wait, it's you're about so to see. Good. Billy Bones. I just love this. It's so brilliant. You're so positive that Singleton is Mm -hmm. Captain Flint. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. It's so brilliant. See, and now he's just Mm -hmm. like, it's all about Singleton until that minute. There we go. Yep. That is the minute. (sighs) I love it. Ah. So, yeah, my point here, I don't know if I said this in the podcast. I don't know if I thought about it in the podcast. Like, Flint is almost looking at us. Like, he's almost mm-hmm. talking to us and saying, okay, we're done with that part. Yes. Yes. Unmasking. Then, mm-hmm. Unmasking, changing the complete context of everything we're doing. And he actually says, do you agree? So he's yes. asking us to come along with him now. Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I still think that this opening sequence is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. It really is. I've been starting to watch, um, I'm way behind, I know, but I've just started watching The Crown and it has kind of a similar opening sequence, or at least it it reminds me of some of the things that they do with the contrasts here. Mm -hmm. It's just so gorgeous. And as the show goes on, you get more and more out of this opening sequence too. And I love that it's like, feels connected but it never relates specifically to anything right. in the show yeah you can't ever point and say oh they're so and so exactly yeah. no it's very thematic without being i don't know like the game of thrones opening where you know it's right it's very specific that you recognize right. yeah right. absolutely so gorgeous beautiful. Just remembering how delighted I was to discover this show. I'm so glad that you made me watch it. <laughs> I'm so glad I made you watch it too. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Mm, shark imagery. That's very good. Their beloved gates. Yep. <laughs> I just I know why we couldn't we keep go. gates, but I will never not miss him. And there it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, we didn't discuss whether we're spoiling stuff or not. Are we spoiling? I guess we are. We I think probably we are. Put spoiler yeah, at this point, if it's a commentary this, okay. track, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All 
We had Joshua take out his teeth. I love the grow up. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It is great. Oh, there's our boy. I still don't know if I buy silver killing him. (laughs) At this stage, I really don't know if I buy it, but whatever, it's there. I mean, he's scrappy. He'll do just about anything to save his own skin. Yeah. I still don't know if I buy him killing people at this stage in his development, but. Fair enough. It's okay. (laughs) I mean, would it's kill or be killed? Sure. God, Singleton, he's so... I don't even know what the word is. Gruff isn't right. No. But it just Yeah, he's fabulous. Hardened. He's fabulous. Excellent casting. Yeah. And of course the makeup with the scarring is fabulous. And we're already talking about tyranny and democracy, yep. which is pretty exciting. I just love the idea that he's actually talking about Flint. It just gives mm-hmm. me such joy. Like everyone seems to agree that Singleton's not too smart, but he's not completely stupid. No. Yeah. Well, him, he's damn close to the mutiny. I mean, he's been working hard. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. See, oh, you, you hadn't started hey, yet. With, you How hadn't started you? yet with Billy needing huh? bats yet at this point. <laughs> It's so clear, just like a scrubby, sudsy loofah. (laughs) Tom Hopper has such excellent facial expressions. I love them. Oh, Dufresne, yeah. I just love that, like, somehow in this crazy episode that has so much going on, like, we really managed to get a lot of the nitty gritty of just day to day, how their lives look, like, just Mm -hmm. all these kind of details about how their lives work. Okay, this, when I watched a million times for the book, this is Mm -hmm. something I didn't bring up in the podcast. These, Dufresne's in the room, and they're about to talk about the Urca de Lima. Oh, interesting. (laughs) You think you send him out for that? Something. Of course, they didn't know he was going to be mean, such don't, a problem, did we they? Don't, yes. We don't see him, but they're like, oh, let's talk in really low voices about the most important thing yeah, about no, this book in the pages. Point. So he's still in the room. Yeah, they should have sent him out. The room. <laughs> Excellent eyebrow work being done in this scene, I have to say. <laughs> this, this, show, this show just, you know, is really all about the eyebrows, I would say. On many, on, his, many, yeah. on many levels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, we haven't seen Jack yet, so we haven't truly we, we, we haven't, haven't truly seen we haven't truly seen eyebrows yet. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ah, Toby Stevens, God, these two He's so good. Well, both right of them. The beginning. These two, mm-hmm. like you, just can feel all of the years of their relationship and all of the mm-hmm. understandings and misunderstandings, but understandings of misunderstandings just in that little exchange. Yes, the like work spouse thing. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Super work spouse thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got to really feel bad for this dude, right? <laughs> So it's so horrible. I mean, I know that we flip now and the pirates are people and we subverted the whole cold open thing. But still, man, that yeah. guy, that's got to suck. Yeah. Just doing his job. Just like, hi, I'm just tied to a mast and they're going to torture me now. <laughs> yeah. Gates's tattoo on the back of his skull is so badass, yes. by the way. I right. love it. So I remember, I think I only asked about the hold fast. Um, because, oh yeah, the whole right? face tattoos. That's so right. that was yes. his choice. John Steinberg told us that that was his choice. I think all of the tattoos might have been his choices. 
his choice the actor's choice yeah mark got oh that's like toby wow. also so toby mark, told us that the gone. fox the fox tattoo that he had was like something that he came up with because of his whole idea of like of jack rackham as a fox as the scrappy yeah fox. huh I just love how collaborative this show was. Mm -hmm. It's really something special. God, look at those eyes. So I know. Cold. He's incredible. He's mm -hmm. really good. That's it's a bold line there. It is a bold line. And it's kind of yeah. amazing because, like, I remember, like, even in early viewings, like I was already on Flint side somehow, and I have no idea how. Like I am just not sure what magic Toby Stevens. Toby Stevens. I was going like, to say the magic of Toby Stevens is why. Right, yeah. but it's just like when Singleton says it. I mean, sure, we did see Singleton be super brutal, and we saw uh -huh. Flint stop him. So, like, that's right. definitely going to yeah, make we us saw Flint show mercy right, right away. So that's going to make us more identify with Flint from the beginning. But it mm. is kind of amazing how quickly when Singleton says that stuff, I'm like, oh, no, that can't happen. It's yeah. Well, I think like Flint has this kind of thoughtful, haunted thing going on, like right from the beginning. Yeah. And yeah. Singleton is just pissed. Right. So I think no. it's just harder to get into his camp. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, whatever it is, Flint just had me from... Hello. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, and that's actually part of what I found. Like, so if you just look at this episode by itself, which I did for when I was writing about course, it, like it course. is fascinating because it sucks you in and sucks you in, sucks you in like you along with Billy, you kind of get sucked in and sucked in further oh, and further. Yeah. Until the end of this episode. And when you're like, fuck, like yep. that guy is actually quite scary. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. And then it's too late. Yeah. Then we're under a yeah, spell right. already. You're already there. Like we've committed just mm -hmm. like Billy. Like Billy made lied, but we're also in. Yes, absolutely. And we're just like, God, what the, the ships are gorgeous. What did we just sign up for? Mm. Beautiful. Oh, hi, Randall. Hey, Randall. And Betsy. Hey, Billy. Yeah, and Betsy, too, I guess. Also, there's a cat. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Liz, people just... <laughs> so many of our listeners love Betsy. <laughs> Take it back know, now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Betsy is the best cat. Sorry, everyone. I was just distracted by Billy's arms. That's all. Fair enough. I just love this. This is just so perfect. Like they're just telling yeah. us all the pirate things mm -hmm. about yeah, the democracy, way of doing it. right? About the democracy, about the fact that captains really didn't get much more than yeah. every crew member. And it doesn't feel like heavy exposition. Nope. It doesn't feel heavy handed at all. Nope. It's done very deftly. Yeah, I'm trying to. I mean, I really, I'm curious if we can find a moment in black sails that feels like a lazy exposition hmm unlikely but i yeah like. i don't feel like i can think of a single one mm -hmm. i mean there are moments where they show us stuff that maybe we don't need to see although you know you and i said that i even even about this episode mm -hmm. and certainly about like the next few episodes but then when I listen to people who've watched the first time and kind of tweet with us and they're just like, uh, there was just, there was too much in the beginning, like too many characters, too much sure. politics. So then I'm a like, lot happening all at once. right. Then I'm like mm -hmm. all the little, like there's the moment where we're going to see silver, look at the page, make sure he has the page in his pocket when they've done the, this, the fake page. And I, sure, I remember thinking it's a little bit unnecessary, okay. except I'm not yeah. sure it is because they've just thrown so much information at the viewer yeah. in this episode that I think those little things are necessary. Mm hmm. They don't hurt. They really don't. No, they certainly don't hurt. It's the kind yeah. of thing as that you notice when you've like watched it a million times and you're right. like, and you're like, do I really need this? And then you're like, well, <laughs> no, actually, I probably did really need that in the beginning. Probably the first time. There right. was a lot going on. Sure. 
Yeah, I always feel for new for new listeners when they're like, I can't remember all the names. And I'm like, I remember being in that oh, place. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's a really good point. The set design is gorgeous, too. Yeah. All these cabins really yeah. throughout the whole show. Everything, yes. Everything is so detailed, so specific. Nothing is overlooked. And this is one of the only episodes where we're going to see uh, Flint wearing white. Mm. I mean, in the current time frame. <laughs> of course, of course. I hear what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just so much more relatable, I suppose, than Singleton. There's yeah, just something absolutely. so... Look, he actually yeah. even smiles a little bit in this season. A little bit. Mm -hmm. He does laugh once or twice in this season. <laughs> yeah, which is always gorgeous. <laughs> Work spouse. Love it. Yep. Oh, my God. So much. It's It's mm -hmm. really adorable. Yeah. I mean, you know, until it isn't. They're a, they're a great partnership <laughs> while they are. Yeah, exactly. A great partnership, but not a true partnership. Not a true partnership, yeah. Which they shame. just talked about. Mm-hmm. This ocean's extraordinary. Look at the color of that. Mm-hmm. Which I imagine... Was done in post some color correction because I does the South African Ocean look? I mean, they had to go for that Caribbean blue, right? Do you know, I've seen pictures that look quite blue. Pretty, uh, yeah. Next next time we get a South African in front of us, yeah, we can or ask virtually about that. in front of us. We'll have to ask virtually about that. in front of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, it it definitely looks like the Caribbean. Like they did a really good job here of making it Absolutely. feel like the Caribbean. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is still very mm -hmm. much more swashbuckling pi pirate tale than what it becomes. It's so funny whenever I go back here, I'm like, wow, it is kind of amazing how much it was that for a little bit. Yeah. And there's remnants of that throughout. But yeah, it's just a very mm -hmm. different story, which also makes sense because, you know, so many bad things haven't happened yet. <laughs> like this is a yes. more innocent time. That's totally true. Yeah. You know, even though, you know, horrible things happen in this episode, mostly at the hands of Bane. But, mm -hmm. um. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this in a while. It's darling. I know. It is very darling. Mm -hmm. Papa Gates. Yep. <laughs> I, I love this. I love watching. I love watching this episode through Billy's eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was our audience surrogate for a while. I don't remember how long it takes before that starts to uh, shift. It's mostly this episode, I feel like. Is it? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it, it, it may be a little bit in the next episode because he's like so yeah. kind of freaked out still by everything that's sure. going on. Which is kind of where we are, but I think in this in this episode he definitely is because mm -hmm. because Flint has to convince him. Yes, Flint has yes. to like Flint tells a lot of stories, but he's mostly even when he's not telling them to Billy, he's telling them to Billy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I just I I love how Silver's just like I don't know anything and i'm still just scrappy yeah like think about silver he starts his day on a merchant ship mm -hmm. right Doing what do we know we don't no mm -hmm. um but yeah he starts his day on a merchant ship that gets boarded by pirates and he ends his day with like a deal or you yeah. know, the makings of a deal in a town he's never been to that he didn't even know what it was or who it belonged to Mm -hmm. Oh, here we are. All right. I still, I have to make my same argument. 
there is no way, there is no feasible reason why anyone would pay for a random guy who's new to the crew to be with, what, yeah. five prostitutes? Well, again, it might be five is a lot. Five is a lot. He's, I was gonna he's say like it, some rando guy. Like, they don't no. know if he's going to be a good customer. It is really hard That's to... That's true. No. It is really... It's a, it, it's just there it for the audience. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bit of a stretch. Not the yeah. me audience, but like some right. segment. Of the audience. <laughs> but we get Max and Adele and you can't talk to them. <clears throat> we do. We get Max and Adele. And so it is kind of neat that we have Max and Adele like from the first right minute. Right beginning. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there she is. There's Max. Like, I don't yep, see, I don't beautiful. see Blackbeard Lady. I just see Max. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Blackbeard Lady. I'm sure you're very nice and you're definitely beautiful. Um, yeah. But, you know. Very beautiful. Probably very talented. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, I love it that Max is about to look at that thing because she saw what he looked at. She's so, so sp- smart. She's yep. so smart. I love her so mm-hmm. much. But yes, this is not realistic. Well, you know, it's a very stars opening for what stars was, you know, sure. six years ago now. Absolutely. It? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just funny, you know, juxtaposed with, you know, Eleanor pouring alcohol back into the oh, bottles. Oh, yeah. Very, sure. In, not and very just, far like, from pouring now. it out on some cook's body. Yeah. Exactly. So no, it's just no, like, no. like... They actually took the time to put the effort into mm. showing how Eleanor would re- actually run a business. Mm. So that's why that's the only reason. It's just like we we're living in a world where business matters. I mean, I guess not here. Eleanor also not making so much sense in this moment. But you know, we just have this one segment of like Blackbeard in this scene, and then otherwise, and this, this episode I'm, is I'm, fantastic. I'm watching this now, like knowing everything I know now about Eleanor, thinking that maybe I will come around on this. Oh no, I've never really come around on no. this. I mean i I never hated it as much as you did. I think it's sad that Eleanor got the introduction that she did. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, remember all of our discussions of like Eleanor not knowing quite how to be powerful. Well, but she is powerful. But how she is? But how to express it or how to inhabit that all the time? Like sometimes she does it really well, and sometimes she doesn't. But yeah, mostly I just I this I don't love this scene. I don't. But we did talk about how she like swears when she's, you know, when she's not quite sure how to exert her power. And then there we see yeah. periods where she swears less. But yeah, this this everything else in this episode I think is pretty fantastic with Eleanor. It's just the first moments. Yeah, I love everything with her in vain. Right. Right from the right from the beginning I love that. Right. Well, and everything right here. Like this is great. Yeah. a great necklace I would love to have walked this set yeah And I love how much of Mr. Scott we get right away, too. Yes, and that he is the voice of reason in this mm-hmm. room. Yeah, it's really interesting to watch Scott in season one, knowing what we know about yes. who he really is. Mm hmm. <laughs> see i love this eleanor she's trying so hard to be rational and smart about this but mm-hmm. you already see that she has a weakness towards flint yeah you see even gates didn't quite believe it right. he's, he's, he's just just like, he's like, like really is that right? it that's all right. i have to do he's like this is working <laughs> what 
<laughs> but I buy it. I mean, that's what's cool about this. So it's like mm-hmm. her introduction is not great, but this scene, I like completely, completely can see. No, I see. think we could have started right here. We mm-hmm. could have started with with Gates walking in this room and asking exactly. for this deal. We did not need that showy, yeah. that showy scene. She could have scene. been standing up above the balcony, just kind of looking at everybody with this look of, you know, right. power and strength. That's really all we needed. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and she even could have been tougher with Gates in the beginning to start out, and that would have sure. done the work. Because yeah. we need her to be tough. We need her to we be... We need to understand that her giving in to Gates right there is a big deal. Because yeah, that's, that's great. That's sure. going to that's going to be really important for the next episode. Even that, I think we can do with a line though, with Scott's doing sort of "Do you know who you're right. talking to?" sort right. of thing, and then right. she no, just no. kind of holds up a hand, Godfather right, but that's, style. No, yeah. that's what I'm saying is we didn't need we didn't need the wet pussy scene we to make it, to make yes. that happen. If anything, that I feel like <laughs> what we needed undermines right. Yeah. Yeah, which again, I think it, I think it is really important. I'm like sorry, my, but Tom Hopper's facial expressions are <laughs> killing me. They're so funny. I know he's, he's like, so befuddled. He's like, what the fuck? Thing. Well, I love what also, the fuck. It's just what his right. face says through the whole episode. <laughs> sorry. No, no, it's great. And you see how much smaller Flint is than him, and Billy's uh-huh. still just kind of terrified of him. Yeah, I mean, rightfully so. And I love that they didn't try to adjust this and he's no. too weak and he's towering above him this is yeah. gorgeous no I because think that- so many other directors i think would have put toby stevens on a block or right. something to just kind of level the eye contact and i love that they didn't no if anything i think this show leverages that like remember there's a yeah. s- there's a scene in season two where um where Vane is actually standing lower down than the guy I always called Cranky Quartermaster. He has a name. I just never oh, yeah. learned it. <laughs> yes. Where he's where he's like, fight me. And like the dude's towering over him. Uh-huh. But it's just like, that's not in this world. Like, yes, of course, being big and strong is important. But that's not, mm-hmm. that's not where strength necessarily where comes is. from. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, that's that smile, scary smile. That that's smile like that. That smile so, of Flint's is terrifying to me. It's so scary. Yep. Uh, another great set piece. Look at this. Yeah. I love that screen in the background, and it's an incredible corset. <laughs> that lantern's fabulous. Yeah, it's funny. I like looking at this. I'm like, this, this is this Max's room? Is this a different room? Like Max's yeah. room becomes something different than this if it is yes. Max's room. Mm-hmm. But it didn't have to be Max's room because there were so many no. people there. She just happens to be the one who stayed, but she stayed for this. For this. of it we get so few scenes with these two together i just Mm. savor them yeah like these two they just they coexist in this show and every once in a while they meet up and it's always so great when they do and that's always a pivot point like it's always Mm -hmm. a point where because they are two people who make things happen yes they have an interesting sibling energy Mm -hmm. like they uh it reminds me a little bit of like the jack and ann twinship yeah <laughs> yeah you know my theory about it, like all characters parallel with max to some extent but silver parallels oh, sure. with her the best mm-hmm. the two characters who you could be inclined to think le- care the least about other people but they're actually mm-hmm. the two characters who possibly care the most about sure. other people ultimately See, I just love this. I love how everyone's smart. Mm-hmm. Like we're just yeah. like we're just like we're just in a world where everyone's smart and we just agree upon this that everyone's smart and everyone's going to be smart. And it makes sense because I'm sure survival 
wasn't easy and depended oh, on being course. smart. Yeah. But I just I just love it. Like no one's showy smart. I mean, okay, mm-hmm. Jack Jack tries to be showy smart, but not in this episode. We're, <laughs> we will get there. But, but even then it's always tries. Yes. Right. He is occasionally but, actually showy smart, but mostly just trying to be showy smart. Yeah. Right. But I just love that like we entered I mean, this is one of the things that sold me on the show pretty early on is just We entered a world where it's just like everyone sits down and they're like, I am strategic and smart and I can see many sides to things. And that's just Mm. the baseline in this world is that people are like that. I keep thinking of our interview with Zach McGowan. I know. Talking about (laughs) this episode, which was just so much fun. I hate that that got cut short. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. And Mark Ryan is just brilliant. I'm, Mark Ryan, that's it. I couldn't remember his last name. Thank you. So I called good. him Mark, which is like oddly familiar. <laughs> my like, my friend Mark, yeah, my who, we never, Mark. who we never actually interviewed. Never so we've, never, we've never yes. talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, he is. He's just, he's incredible. I mean, he's just. He is. Uh, no, I like him so well. Yeah, he just. I'm just not sure how well season one would have worked without him, honestly. Like, he really is so important to this part of the story. And mm-hmm. and it's his... It's just how he's created created this character. I mean, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Because it's so subtle. It's not at all flashy. It's so funny. When you first watch this, you have no idea what Jack's going to become. I know. And who and Jack's going to be. crazy haircut, the weird facial hair. He has this, his language is so different and so much. Yeah. It's elevated, but also it feels. Anachronistic, uh, right? Because Toby said oh, what? Yeah, it's just he like, feels anachronistic. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's hilarious. Just everything about it is hilarious. No, everything about him yeah. is hilarious. And it just, right. Uh-huh. Until you fall in love with it, you're like, what the fuck? And then, <laughs> what is this guy doing? And here? then you're yeah. like, oh my God, he's my favorite. Okay, that yes. might just be me. That's not everyone, but many people. I think there's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Okay, so this was my this was like my one time when I was rewatching for mm-hmm. writing moment. Okay, so if you think about this being Flint's domain, right? Silver is now invaded Flint's oh. cabin, which is like mm. the inside of Flint's world in order mm-hmm. to subvert or basically he doesn't know what he's doing right then, but he's entered Flint's world and he is because of his own motivations, kind of destroying all of Flint's plans. Oh, uh uh-huh. So that moment is kind of a metaphor for the whole show. Yeah, no, that's lovely. (laughs) That was my like random, random weird thought where I was like, look, Silver's inside of Flint's world and destroying how everything's going to go. Literally right as he is telling the story for yep. the first time. The exactly. story of the Spaniard named Vasquez. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's gorgeous. Right. Yes. Flint is laying out the story mm-hmm. while Silver Which is... Which will become such a refrain. Right. Flint's laying out the story while Silver is subverting and destroying the story. Oh, God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hi. Do you not know me? <laughs> I'm Daphne. I'll destroy all your dreams. I don't mean that. <laughs> It's okay. I've owned it a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is edited beautifully. Here. It really is so much. Mm-hmm. Also because <coughs> I, you, um, I remember it almost feels like maybe Flint is actually there. Like you're not quite sure where Silver is. Right. Especially it almost, right there at first. Right. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like, like maybe like, Silver's getting caught. It's just not really clear mm-hmm. in a really fun way. Yeah, it feels very suspenseful. All these pirates have really great teeth. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Wait, except Toby, right? Isn't maybe it's here? Oh, like yeah. Toby he said, had caps, right? Right. He said that they, and I think that they gave up on it at some point, or did he always have bad teeth? I don't remember the the to- the like know. Jack teeth thing, but like Toby really wanted to have crappy teeth because mm-hmm. 
because Jack would have it makes sense. Would yeah, have had no, crappy it, teeth. It, fits, it does fit the character. Yeah. Well, in the time. Yeah. I doubt you know people who went to debtor's prison for any amount of time had good oral hygiene. That's a good point. Look at Billy. I love it. Yeah, the whole thing. He's just yep. so. Yep. yep. It's permanently furrowed brow. Like, it's what, what, uh, still it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's still my favorite thing is just to watch this episode through Billy's facial expressions of like just mm-hmm. Billy figuring shit out. Look at him. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. He's no dummy. He's no, just, he's he no, I mean, he's everything he feels on his yes, face. Yeah. I love, is, I love yeah. Billy. He's not as smart as a lot of people in the show, but you know, that's him mm-hmm. up against people who are, you know, really incredibly brilliant right, and right, yeah, and tactical, in the scary, thinkers. like conniving right. sort of way. <laughs> yes, but yes, yeah, tactical is a good word. But he is no dummy. No, mm. God. I but and you know, and like, seasons, granted, he's trying. like, this is you know, he's hearing all of this for the first time right now. Mm-hmm. This really goes against on so many levels. This goes against like everything the way pirates worked. Right. Like, remember, Mm -hmm. remember Vane says in season three to to teach that he says, you know, it was an unspoken thing that we don't attack Spanish ships like this was crazy. Spain was so strong. I had forgotten about that. Spain was so strong. Oh, this I love this. You were you were the one who were like talking about that. The fact that 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 Richard Guthrie can't see that Billy has the gun on Flint right then and not on him. That's right. Mm hmm. Until this moment. That's where he gives it away. But it doesn't matter because Richard Guthrie is in a lot of pain right now. He's not thinking. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Oh God, all of these right. interiors are yep. so gorgeous. The reflection of the candles in the mirror even. Yeah. So beautifully done. There's so handheld. Shots, so too. I looked it up. Somehow I never looked this up until recently. Captain Hume was a real captain. Really? Of the Scarborough. Well, I'll be damned. I yep. like that. I know. Somebody's I like it too. Research. I liked it too. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like I posted it on Twitter at some point. Like, yeah, there were many Scarboroughs, but there was actually mm-hmm. a scar- version of the Scarborough in this time frame with a Captain Hume. Wow. He's like sweating so I know. I know. Just like sugar merchants. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am so believable right now. Yeah. Oh, God. Here we go. Here's the gossip and the shame. Mm. Gossip already. Yep. Gross. Without shame, the world is a very dangerous place. God. Yep. You would almost say it's like casting shadows. <laughs> you would almost <laughs> say that if you were an incredible writer with a gift for metaphor. You might say that thing. Uh, that's a no. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Ah, Billy. Yep. If you're going to do something like I this. I miss the days where I could just enjoy Billy. I know, before. right? Yeah. We have, a, we have a lot of days of those. That's true. You get, you a, get lot a lot of, of days. Yeah. Yep, you true. get a lot of days. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that we lose Singleton so quickly because yeah. this actor really is extraordinary. <laughs> he had to go. Yep. He served a role. Serve the story. Yep. Serve the story. Exactly right. There we go. Hi, Anne. Look at her. I know, God. right? Oh, the physicality of Anne is really uh, something to behold. From the first Look moment. At, it's really yeah. incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, I think actually I might feel comfortable saying that Anne... Maybe just next to Flint, Anne is like, for me, the most cohesive character. Like from the first moment, she is the person. I mean, she changes and transforms and goes through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually, Vane, too. I feel like was acted like 
the vein we see in the beginning is the vein we always see. Like I feel like with some yeah. of the characters, we had a little bit of shifting around in mm-hmm. season one to figure out who they were. Yeah, sure. Um, but Anne, just like she is Anne from the beginning, like you can mm-hmm. look at her from the first moment you see her until the last moment you see her. And that feels like one person who went through a yeah. lot of shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And changed a lot, but like feels like the same person, which is mm-hmm. kind of amazing. Uh oh. Yeah. See, in hindsight, I love this too. Watch Eleanor. I really, really, I like, I mean, I can't, I don't agree with her response to this, but I like how she did it. Right? I mean, that just works. I really like that where she's just like, she is a hothead. Yeah, she is. Absolutely. Right? She really mm-hmm. lives in her emotional self. And I I like that in hindsight. Like, I really... It just really works for me that she is a ball of emotion, especially in contrast to Max. Like, Max's answer to what happens between them is to shut down, to, like, not show emotion. But Eleanor... She never manages that. Like she, yeah. it might be the smart choice for her, but she never, man- she just is an emotional person. She yeah. can't no, not show point. that. And can't not let it rule her too. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and it makes you kind of understand, and it makes me understand. I think you always like liked Eleanor in vain better than I did it makes Mm -hmm. them make more sense to some extent for me like what they would have seen in each other because he is also that person yeah absolutely no I think you're you're (laughs) absolutely right yeah Vane is also very emotionally driven right and she's trying so hard not to be that person but she's just Mm -hmm. she's not capable of completely leaving her emotional self behind for the sake of business or Even when she thinks that she is right. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. And they have excellent chemistry together. Yeah, I know. Seriously, right? From the yeah, first minute, you just, just like so feel much. all the electricity happening right there. Yep. And the history. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. God, and he's always holding that over her. Yeah, oh, I know. Sucks. I know. Right. Right? I mean, it's just toxic like, bad boyfriend. Like, literally until the last minute he is. Hold- until, yeah, absolutely. He is holding that over her. Uh, the problem is he's not wrong. <laughs> That's like, that doesn't mean he should no, be doing he that. he considers it a kindness to try right. to like make her see it. But yeah. it's still yep. not great. Yep. <laughs> right. When you're like, yeah, what do you, like he's basically saying, yeah, I kind of suck. But like, what do you have that's better than me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to own this brothel, Daphne. Can I just have it? Can I just be the oh new my madam? God. You Is have this bad. No just, idea how it broke my heart to see this in Outlander, even oh, though it was Outlander. like, even though it was, it was the house of <laughs> one of my favorite characters in Outlander. But it, yeah, it broke my heart to pieces. Oh, that's right. They used it for. Uh, Galus, is that right? Yep, Galus's house. Stuff up? Oh God, okay, look at yeah. this. Okay, so I want you to notice this. Watch. Uh huh. I'm gonna. I bring. I'm gonna bring this up in the next episode. Okay, Eleanor's trying to drink, and Max takes it away from her. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have something in the next episode that is a mirror of that. Oh, okay. Noted. Uh, these two also. Oh, this is really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now, do you buy them? Like when we first watched that, you were like, I don't understand this. Like you were like, I don't, I don't buy their relationship. Now there's no way you can't buy them. 
I suppose that's true. Yeah, after every, yeah, after everything. I think it's just because it comes so hot on the heels of her in vain. Right. And then they just they flipped it on me so quickly. I No, I that totally makes sure sense. Right, right, right. On. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Cuz you're like isn't wait, isn't he the boyfriend? Right. Yeah. Well, and Max I don't trust now. She seems totally out for herself and for her own gain. Right. So it just right. there was just a lot that I was No, you're right. Having you're right. to sort of accept right from the beginning. Yeah. That totally makes sense. There are a lot of challenges to to believing this moment. Mhm. And of course I do now completely, you know, now that I know who Max is. Yeah. Well, and you know who, who is. right. Mhm. Oh, Max. Break my heart. Mm-hmm. The music's so lovely. Bear McCreary can do no wrong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Right? <laughs> I'm yet to see him stumble Iconic. even remotely. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I guess this is the other thing is that Eleanor seems to be dodging her so much in this scene. It just, right. I just wasn't sure what was happening. Right. No, no, I get that. I get that. Mm-hmm. I totally do. I mean, when we came to this yeah. as, in the podcast, I had already watched it so many times and I was oh, already, that's true. I was already yeah. just very invested in Max's pain and for Max's pain to work, you have to have these two be believable, yeah. at least believable in Max's mind as a couple. Right. Um, yeah. And Eleanor is resistant. I mean, and that's part of, you know. It, had Eleanor not been resistant to their to their relationship, we would have a very different story. Like basically, yeah. the rift between these two is what starts That's this. Right. The rift between these two is what creates this story in many ways. Yeah, I'm remembering now, just having seen that when she says the world is full of surprises, let it surprise mm-hmm. you. That right. I thought this was the first time that they had yes, sex. You did think, and that. that's why I was so confused. Right, I was like, what is right. happening? Right. I think you're but, supposed to believe it because establishing the relationship makes right. much more sense. Because yeah. um, because Eleanor is actually telling her it's unraveling. So that's like, that is a right. moment of vulnerability. Yeah, that shows that they have an intimacy at least. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean a sexual intimacy, but at least that they had, that they talked from time to time. Yeah. But when you see, I think the moment that you're supposed to understand who they are is when Max makes her stop drinking. Because mm-hmm. that... Oh. When Eleanor starts drinking and Max takes the cup away from her wordlessly sure. and leads her away, that is a couple behavior. That is a couplehood moment. I suppose so. Yeah, I can see that. I can also see it being because she mean, does a- any because like, she like doesn't sisterly or oh sure I guess you know yeah but you just, see I them just, in bed right after so for me that yeah for me no, no, that no, always it didn't works. take long I'm just saying that like the first time I was watching it there was a lot of oh oh no oh no oh right oh. like I just kept well, on, right. like, trying to figure out what the hell well there's a, who was with whom and, well that's yeah. exactly the thing is this show throws a lot of things at you like you also were like yeah you also were like when Anne proposition Jack you were like wait what <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> who what yeah, it's true. All right. Now we have to pay attention to Billy and Flint, though. This is uh, gorgeous. Anytime. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is like, I love this. So he had, you know, it's like, again, it's almost like Flint was telling this whole story for Billy's sake. I mean, I know he wanted yeah. Richard Guthrie to help him, but it's like, okay, phase one of story is about the Urca Dilemma, like giving giving up the secret that he had been holding on to, which clearly holding on to that secret, Flint was realizing was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. He was like this close to a mutiny. But this is where he's telling the story that Billy needs to hear. Yes, yes. This is where we first get monsters and men. Mm-hmm. Which, God, this is so good. This is what does it. This is why Billy lies. Mm -hmm. We have no kings here. God. I know. And we know this goes against everything Billy stands for. Mm Mm-hmm. But it's true. I mean, this was a time, this was at the height of British colonialism, you know? I mean, everywhere they went, they just invaded and took over and wiped out entire people groups. Just that, you know, the the whole 
Yeah. Eddie is her joke. You know, do you have a flag? So it's there was just so much happening to have Billy. There was a lot to fight against, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Yeah, there definitely was. But also for Billy, you know, Flint brought it to when he says exterminate, that is yeah. threatening Billy's brothers. Oh, that's a good point, too. Yeah, absolutely. That ultimately. That's right. I forgot how much he is everyone's protector in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I know. It's hard. Well, he thinks he is hard, in the, hard after, the whole time. Hard after season four to think about that. But it that is, is Billy's yeah. whole motivation <laughs> up until pretty late. Um, mm-hmm. But that is it. Okay. See, this kills me. Like, this, this scene is mirrored in the finale of this yes. season. Like, we exactly have these two basically having a similar conversation in this room and then Mm -hmm. Gates turns to walk out. We have two mutinies, basically. We have one in the beginning of the season and one at the end of the season and Mm -hmm. this part turns out very differently. But Flint looks pretty similar. He sure does, doesn't he? Right? Woof. So here he just, you know, here he just takes it out on the furniture. Mm-hmm. Okay, that chair, I'm not sure, they, that chair just got smashed, but I swear that's the same chair he's sitting in later. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because that chair was my favorite thing one of the times. So he there must have had more than one of those chairs, but. There you go. Yeah. There's another one below deck somewhere. <laughs> and now we have the feather. Which he must have planted. God, it's so smart. Right. No, we He's saw that. So we saw smart. that. We saw that feather fall when mm-hmm. Silver was rifling through his cabin. So he knows someone had been right. in there. Right. Yes. And but we don't see Flint plant it, right? We just have to put together that this is something that he's done. Uh, no, we see him playing with it. Oh, we do. That's right. Oh, no, I we see him. No, now. no, that's in yeah. the next episode. We see him playing with it in the next episode when they oh. when they figure out who the thief is. Sure like at this point, he has no thing. idea who the thief is. He just That's true. That's he just true. has a story that he can use now. Yeah, man, he he definitely thinks fast on his toes. Yes, he does. But man, what a gamble! This is a crazy gamble. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is an insane gamble because he needs to both win this fight and for Billy to choose to go with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's on the ropes, though. He's got to do something. I know. Look at Singleton's just like, what the fuck, dude? What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> Singleton has no idea. I love the moment when you see Singleton understand where Flint's going with all this craziness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Silver's just like... like Trying also, to keep up. I love right. this. <laughs> Well, that's also amazing. I mean, this is when Silver's like, oh, this guy's even better than me. Yeah, right? It's always exciting. See, we get to see Morley. I like that we get a little glimpse of Morley now. (laughs) Silver's like, fuck. Oh, God. I'm going to (laughs) die. Yeah. No, Silver. He'll be after you next next episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, Singleston still has no idea. Yeah, he's trying to catch up, right. though. I like that. <laughs> right? He's just like, what the fuck? Now he's Why gone. do I have a bad feeling in my tummy? <laughs> <laughs> Look how amused Silver is. Silver's like, what? <laughs> I love it. I love watching everyone react Look at to this. this. Excellent vest on Gates <laughs> too. God, the costumes are so good. I like that reference to the articles too. Yeah, I know. I I always mm-hmm. think when they make these references to things, it's just like I immediately went and like researched stuff and was like, what are I they talking about? I remember you saying, yeah. yeah. But I'm just, yeah, it's just so different for people who actually were fans of pirates coming into this and know what articles oh, sure. are and understood yeah. how like how crews worked and. So 
see, look at the, how both of them are standing. I'll always think about what Toby mm-hmm. said about how they chose to have their fighting styles be part of their mm-hmm. characters. You know, that Flint was actually like in a fencing stance and, and Singleton's right. just like, whatever, I'm big. Yes, <laughs> I'm really big and I'm coming at you. <laughs> Which did work for him. Mm-hmm. You know, until it didn't. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. God, I forgot how just blood soaked he ends up at this. Yeah. So brutal. Yeah, he needs. And you're right, very swashbuckly at first. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We're super, mm-hmm. super swashbuckly this whole episode. But that's what's cool is like we started out with a stereotypical pirate story, yes. and then we were like, oh wait, we're doing something else, and now this. Mm-hmm. Like Flint seemed so relatable for so long. Yeah. And he still does yeah, right now, right? Because see, he's like the yes. smaller guy who's like being overpowered by the scary pirate. Like we exactly mm-hmm. we exactly had the like scary oh pirate, God. but then he stopped him, which is surprising, until now. Mm-hmm. Then we had yes. him feel like we could relate with like we could imagine ourselves fighting the big scary pirate until this moment. Yeah, this is the oh, moment. That's a good point, Daphne. This yeah. is the moment where it gets subverted again, and we're just like, "What? Yeah. Where are we? What? Like, we have yes, lost and he's our horrifying. Right. Yeah. He is horrifying, and he's about to look at the camera again. Oh, Jesus! See, and we get to see Billy reacting to it because mm-hmm. we relate to Billy, but now he actually looks at the camera. Oh God! Right. I was like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. We are all behind Ooh, this guy. We like yeah. this guy. Oh, Even God. Silver did. Yeah. Silver just was like amazed at his smarts. And now Silver's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's really perfect. Pirate captain indeed. Yep. I love it so much. It just, we end. This, this is a weird prop moment for me though. How so? I feel like you need to write something on he this should have. He should have written. You need to yeah. write something i don't care what you write right captain flint right but billy please don't sell me out right now bro there's silver checking that i think the empty page is to make sure that we understand completely what just happened yeah yeah you know what i mean if there was writing on it because we don't know what the page looks like so if there was writing we've seen it a couple of times okay but even so like if there was writing on there we would be Mm -hmm. we would like maybe be confused about what just happened because it's blank yeah. We know that we Billy's know lying and it was, yeah. so, it's so important that we understand here that Billy's choosing to go along with Flint. Yeah. Cause we just saw Flint be terrifying. Like mm-hmm. he talked about monsters and men. Then he was monstrous. And, right. And then he was monstrous. And killed a man. Right. Yes. No, that's a really good point. And so we needed to understand that Billy, because of his own fear and because of Flint's power of storytelling actually went along anyway. Mm. So, yeah, I just love that this episode ends you in a place where you're, like, really fascinated, but you're, like, completely off your footing. Like, you just, yes. you don't know what to think and what you're, where you're supposed to be emotionally exactly. Yes. Which is pretty perfect for this show. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, you know, this is, I just feel like this is a really good pilot because it's saying, Mm -hmm. okay, you ready for an emotional ride where you're going to question yourself all the time? Uh Uh-huh. Here we go. That's exactly what I'm handing you right now. Mm. So, yeah, we have this moment, too, that would make you question Max and Eleanor. Because only in the next episode do you understand that what Max is doing, she's doing in her own mind for the two of them. Like now right. you just yeah. see her. No, that's sne- a good point too. Now you just see her sneak out on Eleanor to do this yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And in the beginning of episode <laughs> two. <laughs> Sorry. No, these a little two, bit of delight. These, yes. <laughs> these two are so fabulous together. And these three are so fabulous together. These three. Mm-hmm. We don't yet to have the three of them really interacting, but we will. Mm-hmm. All right. 
gorgeous. That was fabulous. Oh, that sure was. That was so oh. much fun to watch and just yes, we just it get was. to be like the rude people who talk during the whole episode. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't actually tend to like listening to commentary tracks. It's funny because of that. I'm like, I'm trying to watch my show. Okay, I know there are certain there are people who just love commentary tracks, but that's. I, I like doing them. Right. I don't like listening to them. <laughs> I, I do like listening to them if it's something I know well. I mean, I would never do this for like the first watch or even the second watch of something. Oh, Only for sure, something sure. that I actually know well enough to, you know, if yeah. I if I know it well enough that I could actually listen to the commentary track without watching it, then I love sure. the commentary track. I love to hear like the creation and the behind the scenes things. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But not, ran- like- not randos like us. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying I'm happy that we're doing it. <laughs> would not subscribe (laughs) um well luckily you are not exactly our target audience (laughs) (laughs) Yep. also not a podcast listener (laughs) yeah yeah i'm sorry Uh... (laughs) well to our actual audience (laughs) sorry we're a few drinks in now um, we are. It's true. It's true. Uh, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. Thank you to mm-hmm. all of our patrons who make all yes. of this possible. And mm-hmm. um, most of these will be for you all. Some will be in our podcast feed as well. But um, but you all really do make all of this possible for us. And do. Uh, including this thing where we're going to just watch all of Black Sails this way, which is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm very excited. And sometimes we'll be goofy and sometimes hopefully we'll be insightful. And um, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again for listening. From Common Room Radio, I'm Elizabeth Stevens. And I'm Daphne Alou. Steve is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash commonroomradio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag FathomsDeep and follow us on Twitter at Black Salescast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.